Hi everyone, and welcome to the Zen Palace of Healing, part three of my presentation on hypertension. And this one, we're going to talk about treatments. All right, so without further ado, let's get going. So, treatment approaches. How can you start treating hypertension? So there are three things that you have to address to avoid or reduce more high blood pressure. First, stress. And that is connected to the sympathetic nervous system. Nervous system. Because as we talked about, if you have a high shift of the sympathetic over the parasympathetic, then your risk of high blood pressure are going to keep increasing more and more. The other thing is volume overload, which means, as we talked about in the renin angiotensin system, water, sorry, sodium and water are absorbed into the body. So how we need to address that and remove some of the water and sodium that's being reabsorbed to avoid more volume, more water in the body. And then the last thing is peripheral resistance, which we talked about. It's That's how the blood vessels stay strong to keep the blood pressure from damaging the walls. And again, this comes with the endothelium health as well. And the heart. So two things. All right, so let's talk about conventional treatments, what your medical doctor may do. Most commonly, an IC inhibitor, lisinopril, this is, this is an example. So what, are, what do they do? So we talked about already, the, this works in the renin angiotensin system. Let me just say that first. And if you remember, from the first presentation that angiotensin I'm just going to put ang1 becomes angiotensin 2 and this is the one that increases blood pressure by aldosterone and basically constricting the arteries but we have an enzyme in between, as we talked about. This is in the lungs also, the like lung capillaries, called ACE, angiotensin converting enzyme. So ACE inhibitors, they block this pathway. So if you're blocking this, there's no angiotensin 2 anymore. So blood pressure will not rise. Make sense? Good. All right, so for the next one, calcium channel blocker, we have something called amlodipine. And again, that's one example. There's also many other calcium channel blockers. But how they work is they work on the smooth muscles. And basically, they cause vasodilation. because they relax the smooth muscles. They make them relax in the vessels, and when they relax, they vasodilate, and vasodilate is the opposite of vasoconstriction. So if you do the opposite of that, then you're lowering the blood pressure. And then the last thing is a very familiar group of drugs called diuretics. And one of the most popular one is Lasix and HTZ, or hydrochlorothiazide and furosemide. So what they do is they work on the kidneys to excrete water or extra volume in your body. So usually if you, if you know somebody who has edema or build up fluid or puffy um, puffy joints, puffy locations in the body, they're most likely going to get diuretics for that to help excrete the extra volume that they have. 
So naturopathic perspective, natural ways to help hypertension. One is something called contrast hydrotherapy. And this is basically a treatment of water using coal and hot water. And the, the purpose of this is to balance the autonomic nervous system. And when we talked about autonomic nervous system, it's the sympathetic and the parasympathetic. So what, that's what it really does. And you may feel tired after getting a treatment of this because you may get relaxed. That's the purpose of this. Um, let, let me know if you have more questions about how this works out as well. Botanical medicine. There are two plants that are highly used for the treatment of hypertension. The most popular one is something called Rawolfia serpentina or Indian snake root. And by Indian, I mean South Asia, India, not the Native Americans, just to clarify that. And it has over 50 what they call indole alkaloids. Alkaloids is a component that has a nitrogen compound in them. And the nitrogen compound, by the way, this is just an example, it helps it's absorbing the body better. There's better absorption, bioavailability, but you also have to be careful that it can accumulate in the body as well. So that can cause adverse reactions. And one of the most common popular, the, one of the most popular alkaloids from Rawolfia is serpentine. And that is a medication that's used to lower blood pressure. And how this works, Rawolfia is, it's actually blocks the sympathetic neurons to make it as understandable as possible. So sympathetic hormones include epinephrine, norepinephrine, and other things and other hormones. But those are the those are two big ones. And Rawolfia inhibits epinef epinephrine and epinef norepinephrine as well. And they also help reduce high blood pressure because when they are high your sympathetic system is high and your risk of high blood pressure remains high. So that's the basic explanation of that. And then the other plant that we have called hibiscus, sapdarifa. Man, that's a mouthful. And the common name is sorrel. And interestingly enough, it's been shown to be act as an ACE inhibitor, similar to lisinopril. So again, it blocks angiotensin 1 from becoming angiotensin 2. The other thing it does is a vasodilation through endothelial mechanisms. So it causes relaxation of the smooth muscles. We're not sure how, but that's the observation that's, that, has done, that has been done. And for diabetics, it even helps insulin sensitivity. So this plant is actually pretty well, it's a pretty good use and safer than Rawolfia, but it hasn't had that much research in the treatment of hypertension by itself. So. Now this part is more of my intake in it, mind-body medicine. And I put this here also because it's very, very important. And it does, it can do lots of wonders if you do keep these practices on a daily basis or a habitual basis even. So what you do is to relax the body and the mind, you take five deep abdominal breaths and that helps relax and induce the parasympathetic system by inducing the vagus nerve. 
The vagus nerve is the tenth cranial nerve, and that is basically the relaxation nerve, or at least the digestive nerve. And like we talked about, parasympathetic is all about rest and digest, so the vagus nerve is very much activated for that. So by doing deep abdominal breaths, you activate this nerve. And that by itself can help you relax and even lower your numbers in the blood pressure. Or if you if you want an image, alternatively, if you want to do this and you want to close your eyes and picture something, what I would recommend is go from the head, picture from the crown, the very tip of the crown, then make a line to the heart, to where the heart would be, which would be in this area. So just make a line right there and keep that in your mind, keep that in your consciousness. And just by having a picture of your mind, that can also help you relax and stay calm. On the back side, we're going to do a more dotted, and it's going to be on this side for the treatment of hypertension, or at least to help the heart do a do its job properly. Okay? So that's what I have for the treatments of hypertension from a conventional perspective, naturopathic perspective, and mind-body perspective, which is more of my specialty and niche, more to say. So I hope this made sense. This was a long presentation but it was needed to spend some time because there's a lot of people in the US who have hypertension. One in three is actually a lot. So we gotta take care of them. We gotta educate them. That way we can have a healthier society in the future. All right, so if you have any other questions based on what I talked about in hypertension, if you want to know more alternative therapies to how to manage your own hypertension or know somebody who has hypertension and have, has more questions based on that, on this, and how it can help you treat it and support it, just don't, don't forget to email me or send me a private message on Facebook or Instagram and subscribe for more information on how else I can help you with this. Alright, so this will be it for now and see you next week for the next condition. Thank you very much and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.